first wave of cultivated meat products is likely to be dominated by hybrids, so that browns and burgers and nuggets that combine cultivated meat and plant-based meat. But how scalable is the technology to create more sophisticated whole cuts of meat? So we're a cultivated meat company. We're focused on whole cut meats with full thickness, the texture that everybody is familiar with, uh, with full-fledged uh, animal drive meat. And our uh, first target tissue is going to be filet mignon. We're, and you know, coming from the biomedical background, this is a challenge that everybody has been you know, contending with. Uh, in the cultivated meat space, we have the advantage that the tissue doesn't need to be alive at the end of the process, which enables us to do construction work, essentially. And of course, the ultimate goal being to automate that construction work so that we can build up these thicker tissues. But at Mayo De Novo, we're working with uh, plant-derived scaffold materials that are really minimal. And so the, the final product is greater than or equal to 90% cell and tissues der you know, derived from, in our case, cow. And the plantarized scaffolds, these are kind of the secret sauce that we're working on right now. Um, but in essence, it's, it really has to do with how we're configuring these materials and also the uh, dimensions of these scaffold materials that enable, um, that elicit the tissue formation process from the cells. So you have um, a kind of a storied background in this industry. You've worked at uh, Memphis Meats, now Upside Foods, and at Mission Barnes. Um, there's a lot of skepticism you know, in the press around the commercial viability of this technology, um, both you know, from a technical and a commercial perspective. You know, what, have, what have you learned in the years that you've been following the yeah, industry? For sure. You know, and when, in 2013, when you know, Professor Mark Post you know, and they unveiled the first burger, you know, I was working at Humasite, tissue engineer blood vessel company founded by Laura Nicholson at the time. And you know, coming from the biomedical background, I, I was a bit skeptical too, just like anybody would have been. Having these past five years worked in this space, that skepticism has gone away. And so a lot of the work that I've done in these past five years has been around cost of goods reduction which is obviously going to be critically important, as well as scale-up. And so having you know, kind of worked from the ground up and been in the trenches and now having the opportunity to start you know, kind of with a blank slate here, um, feel very confident that this is going to you know, turn into something real. So a lot of the, um, the first wave of products are likely to be hybrid products where people are proliferating a bunch of cells and then kind of harvesting those and then combining them with plant-based proteins, um, probably for commercial reasons as well. You, you're taking a little bit of a different approach. Why is that? Yeah, so I think in order to capture the you know, one trillion plus global meat market and these die-hard meat lovers, the folks that are out there on the barbecue, I think it's going to take real full-fledged tissue, muscle tissue, to convince them. And so I think everybody kind of started where they could at the very beginning, and these hybrid products are amazing. And this is just the next step in the evolution of these animal-free uh, meat products. So you've only just started the company. You know, what kind of progress have you made to date? Yeah, so founded the company in December of 2022, brought on board a first team member here at the beginning of March. I've already developed our first prototype, cultivated filet mignon bite, I'll call it. And so one of the next steps is going to be to make a filet medallion and then ultimately an eight ounce uh, filet mignon for a tasting event later this year. So if you're growing cells outside of an animal, you know, without a functioning digestive system and circulatory blood and so on, are the final products going to be that close to the real thing? Yes, yes. And so you think about muscle tissue being comprised of myofibers, you know, ensheathed within a collagen network. Of course, there's a, you know, blood vessels present. I don't anticipate that the blood vessels are like the direct con contributor to the uh, texture and mouthfeel of conventional steak. The growth factors that folks are using, these are all um, you know, proteins that are naturally present in muscle tissue and able to store. There are growth factors in there too. It's just educating folks on you know the distinction between the two, which is actually very minimal. And so, yeah, I think it, this is real muscle tissue. It's real meat. So finally, um, you're trying to raise money at the moment. Um, what does the um, environment environment be like to raise money? Um, are investors 
more sceptical about this technology now because of the drop-off in the growth of plant-based meat, or are they more enthusiastic because they feel that plant-based meat isn't hitting the spot? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've definitely felt that people are still very enthusiastic. You know, back in December, uh, Ryan Bethencourt and Marilee Soam through their Sustainable Food Ventures, along with Nate Salpeter and Anna Sweet, Sweet Farm Animal Sanctuary, they were the first investors, the first real believers in Maya Vinova and what I'm trying to do. Uh, a lot of these conversations these past few weeks uh, have been you know, really productive, I think, and here being at the Future Food Tech, uh, a lot of meetings and a lot of running around, so uh, very optimistic for where this is going.